God Hits. Hey guys, so today I wanted to tell you about a little something that happened to me and I felt immediately led to come and do a video about it because I felt like God was speaking to me to share this with other people because you too may have, a, may have uh, you might be experiencing what I'm about to tell you. So I was hungry. I decided to stop and get something to eat, right? So I went to the place and I, I was waiting to be seated. And so I was looking around and one thing about me, I like to go out to eat sometimes. So I don't like to sit in corners where it's dark and in the back and stuff. So I'm looking at the place and there's a, somebody just gets up in this really, really good seat, like right in the front, all the TVs going, whatever. So I was like, okay, cool. I want to sit right there. So the hostess walks up to me and she's like, um, you know, she went to get a menu and she was going to bring me at the, bring me to the seat all the way in the back in the corner. And I was like, yeah, no, no, can I sit there? She was like, oh, okay, yeah, you can sit there. So she was a little frustrated though, but I could tell by her response, she wasn't frustrated with me, but I could tell somebody had already kind of aggravated her, right? So she came back a couple of minutes later and she was like, ma'am, I'm sorry. Um, you know, she said, um, that's not my table. So I'm just waiting for the girl to come that has that table. And I was like, okay. So a couple minutes turned into like 10 minutes. So this time I'm just trying to keep my cool. And y'all know when you're like hungry, and then you, it turns into anger and it's like you're hangry. I was kind of teetering on getting there, but I still, something just told me not to say nothing to her, right? Because again, I don't, I could tell her anger and her angst, it had nothing to do with me. It was whatever was going on that I didn't know about and it was bothering her. So y'all remember all these things because all of these things are going to add up in the end, okay? So imagine I'm standing up there like 10 minutes. That's a long time to be seated. Literally, no one is there and there's a server in the area, right? So I'm like, okay, like, why isn't she even acknowledging me? She's not even trying to fix the table. So the hostess comes back and she was like, listen, this is what it is. They say I do everybody else's job. This girl, y'all, she operated in excellence, okay? Straight up. Sis operated in excellence. She said, the only reason why I did not clean your table for you was because, you know, I have been getting, you know, fussed at because, you know, I... uh you know, I quote unquote do everybody's work. And she said, it's not that. It's just that we're waiting on other workers to get back. And if we have to seat people, then I want to just make sure these things are done well, you know? So it was so weird because she comes back to me and she says, the person who is in that section, she doesn't, you know, she's like, I'm just going to keep making her wait. I was like, wait, huh? She was like, yeah. She said, she likes to wait like three or four minutes while the table is still unclean um, so that she can she can do something. I'm not going to lie. I didn't even understand what she was saying. But basically, the server who was who was set for that section where I wanted to seat, she kept passing me and seeing me and wasn't telling me nothing. And the, the hostess was so frustrated because she didn't want me to be waiting there. Right. But she's like, forget it. I'm going to just tell her the truth. So when she said that, she's like, yeah, you know, she just. She's like, she, you just gonna have to keep waiting until she's done, is what she told me. Y'all, I kid y'all not. When she said that to me, I said to her, I said, she said, what? And all of a sudden you heard boom, 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 like a big old crash. How about the girl who was in the section that I wanted to sit in? She had two big, large trays. I mean, she had a lot, a lot of food, honestly. I don't even know why this girl thought she should have been able to bring both of these things like that out there. I know people do it all the time, but it was a lot of food. It was at least six plates, like three on each one of the little things she was holding. The food fell all over the floor. Everybody's order was on the floor. She managed, on, well, on this side, she managed to keep the one, uh, she managed to keep the one on her, uh, her left. And... I just immediately stood there and I said, thank you, God. It was, now let me tell you why I told y'all that. Not thank you, God, because she dropped her food. Even though she had be, she was ugly to me uh, indirectly and just was purposely making me wait just because she was on one. That was God telling me right there. You don't have to do nothing to your enemies, boo. <laughs> you don't have to do nothing to them. What if I would have got an attitude? I would have been well within my rights if I would have bucked on her. But it wasn't even necessary. She played herself. Sis played herself. Okay? Sis played herself. 
So the thing that I want y'all to understand is this. Sometimes, sometimes, God could be setting something up for you and you don't realize that there's some type of barrier that the enemy could just be trying to put in front of you, right? To keep you from getting what you're supposed to get. And if you take the bait, and you fall for the foolery that's been said to throw you off, you are going to miss the thing that God is trying to give you. And you have to stop that in this season. You do not want to keep waiting season after season after season for the same thing that was promised years ago. This is something that took me a long time to understand. It's not going to stop. It's not going to stop until you get the lesson that you can't let everything bother you. It's going to keep going, keep going, keep going. And somebody told me, she said, you got to let stuff roll off you like it rolls off a duck's back. And that's what I understand now. Now, the moral to the story was this. God will make your enemies your footstools too. And I'm not trying to make this situation super deep. I'm just trying to give you context so that you can understand that even in the smallest way, God is always going to make sure that you are covered. The young lady, I still had the same lady. They never changed it. She's ended up being really sweet. She was nice. And everything worked out well at the end of the day. But I do want you to understand something. That same person who tried to delay me, she tried to be nasty, she kept walking on me. She got to pay for whatever she did. I don't know if they're going to charge her for food. I don't know what it was. And secondhand embarrassment. Everybody was kind of embarrassed for the girl. So my point to you is this. You have to know that when you are operating in the way that God wants you to operate, he's going to take care of you. Now, let me tell you something else. Let's go back to the hostess who decided, you know what? I know they told me that I do everybody's job but I don't want you to keep standing here. She went and cleaned the table and got me started, right? She was operating in excellence. There's always an angel in the outfield. I don't know who needs to hear that. There is always an angel in the outfield. There's always someone there that God was strategically placed to make sure you get what you need done. If you keep operating from a space of being the person that he's called you to be, or at least trying to, we're not always successful at that. But if you at least keep your focus on knowing that God truly has something for you, he will send everything under the sun that he deems special, that he deems worthy to come in and assist you and to make sure that you get everything that he wants you to have. It is so so important that you understand me today when I say this to you. Three three things, actually, I'm going to leave you with. Number one, at any time, God could give you your blessing. At any time, be very mindful of your posture and your behavior. I got to keep telling it to myself because I'm not always good at that. Number two, there is always an angel in the outfield. There's always someone there that God will send to you, a ram in a bush, if you will. He's always going to send somebody or something to help you out. And thirdly, keep your cool. Do not lose it unless you absolutely have to. Because I used to hear somebody say this all the time. Whenever you lose your cool, the devil will find it. And that's one thing you don't want him to take. You don't want him to take your cool disposition. You don't want him to take your peace. So when I say cool, I mean peace. Do not lose your peace so that the devil could find it and use it against you. So I hope this blessed you. Just know, whatever you're working on, whatever you believe in God for, don't be thrown off by the opposition. You're just passing through. It does not mean it's going to stay. It's not coming. To, it's coming through. It's not coming to stay. It's coming to pass. It's not going to be there to ruin you and destroy you, but do not fall for the enemy's devices. He does not want you to get it. And do not let people around you tear you down and you kick them while they down and God was using them as your footstool. Don't do it. Hope that blessed you.